Solutions that contain dissolved ions are known as electrolytes. And to introduce electrolytes, I want to start with an experimental demonstration of the difference between an electrolyte and a non-electrolyte solution. So let's dive into that, and then we'll discuss the details of electrolytes on the slides. I have here a 9-volt battery that is connected in a very small, very simple circuit to a light-emitting diode. And although this may be difficult to see with the lights on, if I connect these two leads to one another, the LED lights up. So here we have a complete circuit. And essentially what I've done is broken the circuit and placed these two paper clips at that break so that I can insert the paper clips into a solution and see what happens when I try to run current through the solutions or substances as the case may be. So I've got three different substances here, all liquids. The left-hand substance is deionized water, H2O, in which all dissolved ions have been removed, as many as we could possibly muster. The central beaker here is 0.5 molar, 0.5 mole per liter acetic acid, and the right-hand beaker is 0.5 mole per liter barium chloride. So what we're gonna do is essentially try to run current through each of these solutions and see if the current does go through, observing whether the LED lights up and the extent to which it lights up. So let me turn the lights off and we'll see what we get for this experiment. All right, so now with the lights off, I'm gonna insert these paper clips into the deionized water liquid and there is little to no color coming through there. That brief moment of light you saw was because the leads connected inside the deionized water. So essentially nothing going on there in terms of current. It appears that the deionized water then is what we would call non-conductive, right? There's no electricity running through that thing. Now let's try the 0.5 molar acetic acid. Gonna insert those leads, keep them apart from one another, and you can see that even when the leads are not touching inside the speaker, the LED is still lighting up. In that moment when it went off, I accidentally took one of the leads out of the liquid, but this appears to be a conductive solution to some degree. Let's do that one more time with the barium chloride, taking our two paperclip leads and inserting them into that 0.5 molar barium chloride solution to see if this is conductive. And indeed we see that it is. When I insert these leads into the barium chloride solution, this LED is lighting up. And although it's a little bit difficult to tell, this is somewhat brighter than we observed for the acetic acid solution. The reason these two light up and the deionized water does not, is that these two are called electrolytes, while the deionized water is what we call a non-electrolyte. So in the remainder of this video, we'll understand on a submicroscopic level why these solutions conduct electricity and how we can think about electrolytes in terms of strong versus weak and the distinctions, for example, between the acetic acid and the barium chloride. Electrolyte solutions are defined as those that contain dissolved ions. Because the ions carry charge and are mobile in the solution, can flow throughout the solvent, electrolyte solutions can conduct electricity. The extent to which an electrolyte solution conducts electricity depends on whether it is strong or weak. And strong and weak depend on the concentration of dissolved ions relative to the total amount of solute dissolved. Some substances only dissociate to form ions to an incomplete degree. And this leads to a weak electrolyte situation where we've got a lot of dissolved solute in there, but not a lot of it is actually an ionic form. And so the solution conducts electricity only weakly. So here we see three examples of solutions that have different conductivities and are classified differently in terms of electrolyte status. So ethanol, which is a covalent molecule that is entirely neutral when dissolved in water, exhibits no conductivity. Doing an experiment like we just did with ethanol would lead to that LED or a light bulb not lighting up at all. There are no ions within the solution to carry charge. Potassium chloride is a classic example of a strong electrolyte. When we dissolve KCl in water, it dissociates completely into K plus and Cl minus, and the movement of those ions facilitates the flow of charge and the flow of current through the solution. So we get high conductivity, the light bulb or the LED is bright. Acetic acid dissociates to an incomplete or partial degree. When I take acetic acid and dissolve it in water, only a small portion of the molecules react with water to form ions. So the concentration of dissolved ions is relatively low, the current flow is relatively low, and the solution is not very conductive. This is what we would call a weak electrolyte solution. And this is typical of covalent compounds that react incompletely or only partially 
with the solvent to form a small concentration of dissolved ions. To really understand what's going on inside an electrolyte, we need to appreciate this idea of dissociation, which is the separation of ions and surrounding of those separated ions by solvent molecules. In aqueous solutions, the sec second half of dissociation, if you like, where the ions become surrounded by solvent molecules, is also known as hydration. And of course, this happens as the ions separate and facilitates their separation as they move apart and form sort of independent solute particles in aqueous solutions. For ionic salts containing, for example, a metal cation, some non-metal anion or polyatomic anion, dissociation is complete. And this is true even for sparingly soluble salts. So even if a small amount of solute actually dissolves in the solution, for any ionic salt, we can be sure that the dissolved components are fully dissociated, are in completely ionic form. And it's important to appreciate that dissociation is conceptually distinct from dissolution. The process, for example, of potassium chloride solid going into aqueous solution doesn't necessarily entail that the ions are separating. This is what we would call dissolution right here. Dissociation is this process of the dissolved KCl separating into aqueous K plus and Cl minus ions. This picture on the right gives you an idea of the intermolecular forces in play as KCl dissolves. Ionic bonds between the K plus and Cl minus ions in the solid, in the solid lattice, are replaced by ion dipole forces. Electrostatic interactions between the dipole in water and the ionic charges in K plus and Cl minus. And one thing we should point out about these interactions is that note that the positive end of the dipole in water is pointed towards the negative chloride ion right here in this ion dipole interaction. And if we look at the K plus ions, the negative side of water's dipole is pointed toward the positive K plus ion. So opposite charges attract, as we've seen previously in discussions of intermolecular forces. Once the ion is surrounded by a shell of water molecules, such that it's essentially completely independent of other dissolved ions, we say that that ion is hydrated, or has undergone the process of hydration. What we'd like to be able to do is look at a substance, have some idea of its structure and the type of bonding involved, and predict whether it will be a strong, weak, or non-electrolyte. This slide provides some guidelines on this process. So first of all, if I've got a neutral covalent solute that is unreactive in solution, something like C12H22O11, which is sucrose, table sugar, this is a non-electrolyte. And this is because all of the particles dissolved in that solution, all of the solute particles, are neutral. There are no ions to carry charge within those solutions. So a submicroscopic picture of a sucrose solution, for example, is going to include the water solvent, the vast majority of molecules of which are neutral, even the little bit of hydronium and hydroxide that's found in pure water is insufficient to conduct electricity. And those solute particles are each individually neutral. And so there's no charge in here, no means to carry electrons around, no means to push electrons through. These are non-electrolytes. There are covalent compounds that can form ions, and the most common way this happens is through an acid-base process with water. When this happens to a non-negligible degree, the resulting solution is an electrolyte. So for example, hydrochloric acid reacts with water to form chloride anion and hydronium cation, and this process yields ions from the neutral solute HCl. For this reason, a solution of HCl in water is an electrolyte. And this happens to a complete degree. This happens 100%. This reaction occurs 100% in the forward direction, making HCl solutions strong electrolytes. All of the dissolved HCl is in the form of H3O plus and Cl minus. Acetic acid, which is the second example here, reacts with water only reversibly, incompletely in other words, and that's indicated by this reversible reaction arrow right here. What this means is that while acetic acid forms ions in water to some extent, it doesn't do so completely. And so this has a relatively small concentration of dissolved ions in solution, 
many, many more of the dissolved molecules are neutral. And in this case, we're looking at a weak electrolyte solution. And just to bring a little bit more clarity to the weak electrolyte picture, let's draw a picture of the submicroscopic situation for the acetic acid. So the vast majority of molecules in the solution are neutral water molecules. Generally, those cannot carry charge, including the very small concentrations of H3O plus and OH minus that are present in pure water. So essentially, we've got our solvent here sort of in the background in blue. And let's imagine the acetic acid molecules as consisting of an acetate bit, which I'm going to draw here in orange, and an H plus bit which I'm going to draw here in red. So although acetic acid is a covalent compound, when it reacts with water, it forms ions, and those ions are acetate, which has negative charge, and hydronium, or H+, or H3O+, which has positive charge. Now the vast majority of molecules in a solution of acetic acid are neutral molecules. They're intact CH3, CO2H, surrounded by water molecules engaging in hydrogen bonding and that kind of thing. For a very small percentage of the acetic acid molecules, reaction with water has taken place to form acetate and hydronium. And for those, the ions will be separated or dissociated, just as we've seen for an ionic salt. And so there is a little bit of charge here in the form of a small concentration of free acetate ions with negative charge and free hydronium ions with positive charge. And those can carry electricity, can facilitate current flow through this, and this is what makes this an electrolyte solution. But it's a relatively weak electrolyte since the vast majority of dissolved molecules are neutral.